Wake up, brother, gon' rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, think grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Yo, set your affirmations, aspirations. I got shit to do. The aftermath of preparation. Good food, good mood, blood in circulation. One step at a time. Yeah, that's how you make it. Set a goal you control, and the steps you take them. I try to pick one thought, have some concentration. And if I make a mistake, it's called education. I try to do this every day, call it replication. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. So life ain't easy, yo. I think there's a reason, though. Ups and downs, just like every different season, yo. Sometimes I'm high, other times I'm barely breathing, though. I you always got a fight night from the demons, yo. Negative thoughts are poison, they rot. Uh. Head full of flaws, so here come the clouds. Uh. They'll never stop unless I can swap all the bad for the good in my head when I'm lost. Uh, yeah, so I'ma fake it till I make it. Positive thoughts are overtaking. I got patience, one day at a time is how you operate a cadence. A flow, you grow, you show yourself a foundation. Stay away from all the shit that causes temptation. I know that I like to do it 'cause the sensation. I live my life in my head like a narration. Don't expect greatness, do my best, man. I'll take it. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Tom, it's just a tough subject. A recent study by Brown University showed that nearly 450 children are killed each year by their parents. My daughters were picked up on a Friday by their father to spend the weekend. And that night, he um, pumped carbon monoxide into their bedroom and slit their throats. This has begun for two children killed by their mother in Pickens County. Nine-year-old Hayden King was laid to rest today. Hayden's four-year-old sister Harper will have a celebration of life service tomorrow morning. Here's a story that's breaking at six o'clock. It's all centered around the three people you see on your screen. The key pieces in a Middletown murder case. On the left is James Hutchinson. Police say the six-year-old was killed allegedly by his own mother. East Los Angeles mother was charged today with killing her three young children. The youngest was less than two months old. at six with breaking news. Good evening to your friends, Greg Merriweather, along with Elizabeth Vow. Our top story today, that precious little two-year-old right now, two people are facing charges, accused of murdering little Nebea Allen. Investigators found the two-year-old dead in Mississippi after several days of searching. One of those blamed in her death, the girl's mother, Lanaya Cardwell. to the west coast we are everywhere true crime is we are asking for the public's help we are searching in the woods we are doing what it takes here on the bullhorn betty channels to find answers to the most alarming cases we have been watching on the news 
I can tell you personally that I have traveled this entire country seeking these answers and bringing that content right here to you here on the Bullhorn Betty channels and Bullhorn Betty crime stories. We are happy with the work that we've done. We brought many answers to the public and we have defied mainstream media in our pursuit of the truth in these cases. We will continue to work, we will continue to fight for these victims, and we will continue to tell their stories here on my channels. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty brand of channels and the Coffee Club. Thank you for your love, thank you for your support, and more importantly, thank you for allowing me to bring these victims stories to each and every one of you advocating for each of these victims. God bless you, God bless America, and more importantly, God bless our victims. We're trying to, I'm doing some new stuff here. I'm doing some new stuff, trying some new things out, seeing if we can uh, get a better, um, you know, get you guys some content throughout the day. And so I am doing a little bit more. You guys will be receiving, I don't know who that is, but you guys will be receiving another um, uh, video probably within two hours after this live because I'm trying to keep you guys uh, pumped with information, as much information as possible. We are going over the Sebastian Rogers case. This, ca this case is kind of, it, it went from basically a no-name case to one of the top um, uh, cases that are being talked about online and throughout uh, mainstream media. This is of a 15-year-old boy that disappeared. He's autistic. He disappeared from Hendersonville, uh, Tennessee. He hasn't been seen or heard from since. The story around his disappearance is a little odd, to say the least. You know, his mom says basically he went to bed around 9 o'clock in the morning, and when she woke up at, at 6 o'clock, or excuse me, 9 o'clock at night, and when she woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning, he was just gone. She frantically looked for him and immediately called law enforcement. And that story has changed slightly from its origin, original uh, statement uh, about eight days after uh, Sebastian disappeared. A lot of people have noticed that that, um, you know, the behavior of his stepfather and mother are a little peculiar um, and, uh, you know, a little off-putting in part because uh, there's major search efforts underway uh, for their son and they're nowhere to be found. So that's the biggest concern. And as we are, you know, kind of peeling back the layer of onion in this case, we are finding out that there's more than meets the eye. Uh, there's things that are going on behind the scenes in, in this matter that we did not know about, that we are starting to learn about uh, when it comes to Chris. Uh, we heard the statement from Nina Gomez. This is a, the ex-wife of Chris Proudfoot. Uh, she had a very emotional, heartfelt um, testimony. In my opinion, now you know there's always you know two si three sides to every story, right? There's always his side, her side, and the truth. And somewhere between his side and her side is the truth. Uh, the problem here is she was so believable. It, it's hard. It's 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 very hard um, not to believe almost everything that she said. And that's where I think a lot of us are struggling at this moment. Um, then we're learning out, we're learning from Seth, um, you know, Justin, Justin on TikTok, uh, he's a, a guy that's been on TikTok for several years, uh, has a huge platform over there, and he's kind of moving some of that over to YouTube, and he's, he got a interview with Seth, he was one of the, one of the uh, content creators that were out there searching uh, for, for Sebastian early on in this, in this case. And so Seth was on his program last night. He did an amazing job. If you guys have not been over there, uh, it's Justin on TikTok. And that you yeah, type that into the YouTube search bar, <laughs> Justin on TikTok. And um, it, it'll give you the Seth interview. I'm going to play a little segment of this particular um, uh, clip. There's just one little spot that I want to expound on. 
And I want everybody to go over there and watch it. It was a great interview, but a few things that we learned from that interview from, from Seth was that, you know, there were some things that happened to Sebastian when he was a little bit younger out in California. Um, an SA event that happened with a 13-year-old boy. And so I guess in Chris's mind, or at least what we're, we're, we're learning, um, in Chris's mind, he believes that Sebastian would injure Faith in a similar way, kind of like the victim becomes the 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 assailant type of situation and it's very difficult when we get 100 likes on this channel i'm going to give some memberships away oh well thank you miss robin thank you miss robin we need to get those 100 memberships or 100 likes so we can get those memberships <laughs> right thank you miss robin god bless you god bless you it broke my heart listening to seth talk about that yeah it, it was very it was really difficult for us to kind of um understand because that's such a um personal and um you know the, the you, you never know what the cost of a injury like that is you know what i'm saying like what the total cost of it is because the effects of something like that usually don't happen for years especially in younger uh, kids and it, it and when it does hit them or something, it typically is, is not good. It, you know, they usually go to substances and alcohol to uh, drown out the memory or the pain. Now, I don't know how um, that works in an autistic boy. You know, I don't know how he was handling or managing that. Um, but it's such, you know, he was a victim of a crime. And here he has his step parent making him out to be a monster because of that. Uh, Chris Proudfoot, you know, I, I go back and I review these things, and he tries to act like such this nice guy. But every time you hear him talk about Sebastian, it's not good. If you listen to it, I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, he's a good kid, but, you know, and, uh, you know, he, he he's really smart, but, you know, it's it's like whenever you, whenever you do that, I could care less. Let me just go ahead and address this right now. Um, Ollie, let me, um, Duty Roddy, Ron, Shane Bourne. No, no, he didn't. He's talking about people out there. I haven't done anything out there in the Sebastian Rogers case, so how could he possibly or remotely be talking about me? Did you ever think about that? Like, I seriously haven't. So quit spreading, spreading around misinformation. Quit being a jerk in the chat. People don't want to deal with it. People don't like the hate here. So either, you know, fall in line or get out. It's pretty simple. We, we have a discussion. This is about a 15-year-old boy. It's not about your petty bullshit. It's not about your personality conflict with me because I'm pretty sure I don't like you either, right? Um, so it, when it comes to Duty Ron, my only thing is, is maybe if he just looks up and maybe does his own research, he would find out that some of his information is skewed. But it's not for me to tell Duty Ron how to do his channel, just like it's not Duty Ron's responsibility to tell Bullhorn Betty how to handle her channel. And quite frankly, I would never want to deal with, um, you know, I'm I, Duty Ron's people aren't my people. He's he's a police officer. I'm an advocate and an activist. Much different platforms, much different platforms. But that's okay, Ollie. I hope you have a great day. And if you keep becoming a nuisance in my chat, I will block you. This and actually, you know what? Have a good day, Ollie. I wish you the best. God bless you. So getting back on this, you know, we have this SA situation going on with him and his stepfather basically turning him into a monster. And then we find out that Seth has this story and he talks about, he talks about um, Sebastian being, not wanting to go home. And he actually broke down a little bit while he was on Justin's show because he didn't know why. He asked him, and he never really told him. He never really told him at all why, what was going on. And now we're finding out Chris Proudfoot's lying about everything. Um, if you guys haven't seen the newest Nancy Grace, one of my mod members, uh, you know, sent that to me to review, and I did review it. And... It's a little perplexing. Nancy Grace acknowledged that Chris Proudfoot refuses to take a polygraph test. He's the only one that sh that exhibited marks all over his arms. Uh, he's the only one that won't tell anybody where the hell he was. 
He's the only one that seems to be deceiving the entire public along with his, his, his wife that has chosen a man over her son. They can't explain why they're not helping with the search. They can't explain it. They cannot reasonably explain it. You know why? Because they're filled with shame. Nobody runs away when they're missing a kid. Nobody. Hell, if you really want to put it in perspective, Don Wells and Candace Fly didn't even run away. <laughs> if you really want to compare apples to apples, they're worse than the Wells. What? They're worse than the Wells. At least the Wells didn't drive off and leave Summer behind. They stood there and let their kids get taken, have bullhorns up their ass. <laughs> I mean, come on. Even the Wells didn't cower down. They had more balls than these, these, these military-trained Navy people that like to leave men behind which happens to be their own damn son. So why would Sebastian be scared of Chris? And why would Chris be calling him a pervert when he's not even home? It seems to me that Chris didn't really like kids. And the only kid he even could slightly stand was his own. And I have a funny feeling if he got custody of that little girl, that little girl would be abused too. Let her talk back to her daddy. They're out there right now going to or searching land near and around the home. Again, this is they've already done it several times. There was a pair of glasses that they're saying is not any kind of relation with Sebastian Rogers, but all of a sudden, all these search efforts just started gearing up with law enforcement so to me that's that's kind of signaling that they've got something you know some type of information leading them back out there potentially i don't know but it just seems probable because there's not if the glasses had nothing to do with it then that's not the reason why they were planning and they said they were planning it for like a day or so before that they actually went out there so i keep wondering did some of that those those search warrants come back in you know just like Kaylee Gonzalez, you know, we've seen all those through the Brian Koberger case where we're seeing those, those search warrants come back in where they're sending them out to the phone companies, they're sending them out to the social media, they're sending them out to all these places. Well, it takes some time for that stuff to get in, and it sometimes takes about 30 days, two weeks to about 30 days, maybe five weeks at the most, to start getting that stuff back in. Miss Robin's saying uh, seven more likes, so if you guys want to get... Uh, Get some free memberships to the Bullhorn Betty channel. We need to get those likes up. Seven more likes, babes. Seven more likes. I know we got it. I know we got it. So I'm not, uh, you know, with the, the whole, and I wanted to go over this. I was actually had a, a completely different thumbnail than I have, but with that new interview, which we're going to get to here in just a second, about Chris being, um, or Sebastian being scared of Chris, we were going to talk about, because they're out in the area doing these searches, and there's a lot of water and a lot of, um, you know, stuff out there. So, you know, potentially draining ponds and stuff like that. What did we learn with Riley Strain? This is why I say when I was ranting, I don't remember if it was my rant this morning or last night. I've been doing a lot of ranting on this case. I have to be honest with you. <laughs> it's easy to do. It's easy to do. We got, uh, you know, it, it, it wasn't at first, but now it's it's easy to do. But what do we learn with Riley Strain? And as horrible as this sounds, now one thing we did learn from from uh, Seth Rogers is Sebastian knows how to swim. Okay, first and foremost, he's a great swimmer. Okay, most autistic uh, children, the reason why they drown is because they don't know. Holy crap! Thank you, Miss Robin. God bless you. She did. She did a ten pack. I think I need to give her the Miss Robin strolling into the chat. Ms. Robin strolling in the chat. Hey, second thesis. Nice to see you guys. Thank you all for being here, by the way. 
But he, if he can swim, but well, okay, let me get back to that before I get distracted again. The one thing we learned about Riley Strain, right? Riley Strain. One of the things that we learned about Riley Strain is that typically in colder water, it takes about 14 days for them to be buoyant. Okay. We're at what, 38, 39 days at this point? Maybe 40? I'm not even keeping track of the days, but I know it's a significant number of days. If he was out there in any of those ponds when they did the flyovers with those helicopters, they would see him. Even Riley was halfway, you know, he, he had a, it's awful as it sounds, I pray to God there's no Riley family in here, but he had a log on his head. You know? So, but he was still able to be found once he surfaced. So, at this point, let me just be very clear how what my position is if he is in the water. This drowning theory, this drowning theory, in my mind does not exist because the kid knew how to swim. And at this moment, right now, I believe he would have been found. I believe he would have been found weeks ago if he had drowned. Now, we do know of some RSOs. There's a person, my mods have been working on this. I know that they sent it to me yesterday. I reviewed it. I think it would be, um, uh, you know, bad for me not to bring up the RSOs. There is an RSO that lives nearby this boy, okay? Five minutes away, I think. My mods can, can correct me on that. But it does appear that there may be an RSO or two. You know, they're, they're, they're everywhere, right? And like I, we were having a discussion in my chat, and bear with me, and I know it's probably going to piss some people off. I piss people off all day long, and that's okay, okay? Just deal with it. Love me for me or don't love me at all, okay? <clears throat> I'm not looking for RSOs that have an age problem, okay? What do I mean by that? I mean that a 16-year-old decides to sleep with um, an 18-year-old or a 19-year-old and mommy and daddy get pisses, pissed off and scream R. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't have time. I think that the, that is a waste of the RSO system if you really want my truth about that. I think that is ridiculous to ruin somebody's life over a minor age. In my opinion, whether our laws say it or not, I, I, kids these days make a lot of adult decisions. And I'm sorry, at 16 years old, I was 16 once, and I know exactly what I was doing. <laughs> okay? So cut it out. Okay? You can say whatever you want, but cut it out. Let's be honest. So I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for predators. I think predators are the only people that should be in the RSO system. Predators. These are people, and it doesn't matter what age. These are people that violate people. These are not mommy and daddy's pissed off, okay? Those are the people that we need to be looking at in this community. Now, I don't know the story about the RSO that's down the road. I'm not going to throw his name out there. Um, but is it possible that he's one of the predators versus one of the age gap? And the reason why I say this is because I didn't realize this. And let me just give you guys a history on why I'm, I'm saying this. is because we covered the Idaho 4 case, okay? And we went out to uh, Moscow, Idaho to learn more information and to do some investigative reporting on the case. And when we got there, one of the people that we met, which was set up uh, by another creator for us to uh, send us some information on this person, and he was an RSO, so we went and knocked his door, okay, and talked to him because he was literally at a house, and you could see the girl, the 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 the, the um, King Road property, literally from his front porch, like he had, I guess, balcony, because he this this place there was there was a house like a an apartment on the bottom and an apartment on the top, okay. So we had an opportunity uh, to speak with this man, and he explained why he was an RSO. He was an RSO. He's been an RSO for, I think, at this point, 20 years. And he, had, he was dating a younger girl. It wasn't he was predatory. It wasn't that he was, you know, peeping in the girl's windows. It was something that he did very long time ago. And we, I, I looked into it, and he was being truthful. 
so I'm now that I know that they're, you know, when we look at these RSOs, we have to dig a little deeper than just saying, oh my gosh, they're RSOs, because I did not realize that there are some people that were over just slightly over the age that are in this RSO system because they had a girlfriend that was just a slight, you know, too young. It's not a 30 year old dating a 12 year old. I mean, you're talking about uh, something like an 18 year old dating a 16 year old or a 15 year old. I know people are like, I am 15. Okay, I get it. My, my ex-husband's 10 years my senior, okay? Just to throw that out there. I, I won't do that again. I'm, I want somebody <laughs> my age, right? But either way, it, it's, I just wanted to throw that out there. So you're talking about a three-year difference. And, and, and those are not the things. But is this guy out there in this community, is he a predator or is this an age number? I don't know. But there are some. And you know what? Even though Chris and Katie seem awfully sus, <laughs> could it be a different possibility? Yeah, it could. But you would kind of think that you would have seen this person's car coming up, right? You would think that if they have videos that can see a, a, a dump truck, right? Why can't they see two headlights coming in, right? Or brake lights leaving. wondering if they have like a dolly you know like a dolly like a hand truck you know because I keep going through all of this stuff and I keep trying to figure out this was a pretty big boy you know he was 5'5 five five, 120 pounds okay yeah So, but, but, I, but I just felt it to be, I felt that I needed to explain that because, you know, a lot of people see the RSO and I, I was the same way, but I got educated on it. And I'm just like, you know, I, I, I think they've modified it now, this day and age. So the predators are on there. I think they realize that they're, the way the law was written at certain times kind of made it too, uh, it, it was, it, it, it encompassed too many in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that somebody that R's somebody needs to be on it. I think somebody that essays somebody needs to be on it. Um, you know, but statutory, you know, no. Should they be punished? Yeah, you know better, right? We, right? They, we know better. You could just sit there. If she's, if she's your one and only, what's two more years, right? <laughs> if you're going to be there in a lifetime, what's two more years? Just wait. Just wait. Your mommy and daddy would be pleased. So let's go over here. I want you guys to hear this from uh, Vinnie Politan. And, and don't forget, guys, I do have the um, phones on. When I have the videos playing, don't call in, okay? Th they are on. Oh, hey, Map, it's nice to see you. Don't call in because your number may pop up, and I don't want to dox you. But when you see my face like this with no screen on it, you guys can call in and, and stop me if I'm talking. I don't care. If you guys have something to say about this case, please share. Please share. We want everybody um, that has any information or any perspective to be sharing. I think it really does help. I think it helps us as collectively. I think um, it validates some other people's concerns when we do that. And I think it gives us a, a, a good perspective and, you know, the possibilities because we all think differently. So before we get started, let me get over here to Vinnie Politan, and then we'll move down, and, and then we'll have a little bit further discussion. So this is, this is from this morning, and this is exactly why I'm not going to be playing a whole lot from this, because he just dropped this, and I'd really like you guys to go over there and watch it in its entirety. Again, um, I am a major Vinnie Politan fan. I, there's, there's a few people that I'm like major, like all-in fan, and he's one of them, as you guys know you guys watch me a lot so let's listen to this um what was happening that makes sense to me that makes sense to me um but you could be right jen i you know we, we come back to where we are we don't know law enforcement does not know uh, i wanted to get that I, I didn't think it stopped there hold on a second it was this it was when he was All talking right. let's continue i'm going to continue yeah, the um i think he's getting to it because i am going to run out of time here eventually so let me make sure I get to all these. 
I have a group of volunteers that changes pretty much through throughout the day, throughout the week. So whoever's off work that wants to come to help, they come to help. And then I separate everybody in teams and I ask them to go fly or this area or fly or that area. And one of my volunteer groups found glasses. They contacted me because... And again, I want to make sure you guys know that, you know, law enforcement again told us that these glasses, let me see if I can get that, hold on, there we go. Uh, law enforcement told us that these glasses are not Sebastian's, at least that's what they're saying. Now, Nancy Grace kind of exp explained it to us how they check these glasses. So what they do is they actually take the lens out of the glasses and check the prescription and match that prescription to the last known prescription of say Sebastian and so I'm assuming if they're saying that they're not related there must have been a different um, subscription um, or prescription in those glasses um, so that would be the thing and you can always turn down your volume if I'm too loud for anybody in the chat uh, that's why you guys have your own personal volume controls you can turn me up as loud as you need to or turn me down as low as you need to God bless they couldn't get a hold of anybody at the they told me they couldn't get a hold of anybody at the sheriff's office i turned around i called my contact um they were busy i flagged down a deputy sheriff that i saw by our volunteer area so he flags down people you know, he's got a problem. He doesn't want anybody touching anything. So he flags people down because his contact, he couldn't get a hold of his contact. I, I don't understand why Katie and Chris can't do this stuff too. Why is it left on all on Seth's shoulders to do? To coordinate the organization, to team up the people, to send them out. When you have two military trained people that could probably give some pretty good insight on maybe a possibility of a better way to do it right and turn around and had him wait and i told them to put on gloves bag them tag them bring them back so i could give them to the deputy sheriff that was there so that we could fill out the evidence and have a chain of evidence he's even learning about chain of evidence like i just don't get I just don't get it. I really just don't get it. So. And when you saw the glasses, do you agree with this that they they, they couldn't be Sebastian's? They were they were very similar to Sebastian's. It's been it's been a month and a half since I've seen my son. So, you know, it's a month and a half since I've seen his glasses. They looked really really similar to the point that I didn't want to lose a chance that these might be evidence. So I gave him. So, I mean, he, he even hit himself, he says that he was absolutely unsure as to whether these were his or not, but it was enough, it was so close that it, it, it was, it, he needed to bag and tag them. Oh my gosh, Grace, you are not, you're not lying. The whole, everything with Seth, it, it breaks my heart too, because I just feel, I feel his desperation. It's the, you know, that's the problem I have, guys. I feel this man's desperation. He's, he, he's literally trying to do everything he can to find his son with literally no help from the last people that saw him. You know, no help. The family, the, he's got the family following them around. We know who the hell, who the hell Seth is talking about. Raise your hand if you think he's talking about the Bower socks. Because you know what? To be honest with you, we had our own people out there from social media recording the Bower socks following them around and chasing them down. So your family has time to follow the search efforts. But not help? What in the ever-loving you-know-what kind of garbage is that? I, 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 there's just no words. And you know what? I, you guys watched me. You guys watched me come here every day and struggle to convict Chris or uh, Katie. I work very hard to keep my personal um, 
feelings at bay, especially in light of the behavior panel doing their uh, assessment of them. I backed off greatly. I backed off greatly. I thought maybe, you know, because I'm dealing with a lot here. You guys know what I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with a court case. I'm dealing with a lot. And I'm bu building other platforms and other channels to boot. So it's like I'm, 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 I'm having, you know, I just thought maybe I'm, I'm off. You know, everybody, I, I like to take self-inventory here and there. You know, it just helps keep, guides me, helps me keep doing better. And so I, I figured maybe I'm just off. You know, I don't really have a whole lot to, to bounce my thoughts and stuff off of anymore. So I thought maybe it was just me. And and I kept going down this, this you know, this trail. And I'm like, this is just not feeling comfortable. You know, this is not making sense. But, you know, we kept putting it out there. But it wasn't until they showed up at that barbecue joint. And the next day they took off. And I was done. I was done sitting here acting like I, 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 I'm, I'm an idiot that I don't, you know, that I'm, I'm, you know, second guessing myself, doubting myself because of, of, of these professionals on the, this behavior panel. This is screaming bloody murder. This is literally screaming red flags. This has literally got every single bell imaginable glaring and blaring right now. And here I am trying to say, and there's nothing to see over here. I'm calling BS. Chris and Katie have a lot of explaining to do, and they need to start because their story does not make sense. If it did make sense, we would have Sebastian. One way or another, no matter what his condition, if their story held water, Sebastian would be here. And he's not. He's not. He's not in the waters. He's not in the woods. It doesn't make sense. All his shoes are accounted for. All of his belongings are accounted for. The only person that isn't accounted for is Mr. Christopher Proudfoot that refuses to tell us his timeline or take a polygraph test. Katie knows what went on inside her home. She knows how that man despised her son. And instead of her putting him in check or leaving him and choosing her son, she chose her man. Now, you guys don't know a lot about my history. But I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that. A lot of mine and my father's problems are by the person he's with. I have a big problem when people turn their backs on their children over another human being. That's not their blood. It's kind of like a PTSD type of thing for me. So it really kind of is a personal issue for me. And I'm okay with that. But Dan, Katie. Came to the Sheriff's Department to log his evidence. Okay, so that was the one. And then, uh, so it must have been, so here's the other one that he, this is the one I really want to get to right here. Okay, last night, not giving them rave reviews, but I think he's being respectful. And obviously, um, there has to be a level of frustration that is setting in for him. This clip, because this is um, from the Chronicles of Olivia, the, the sit down interview in, in the home. I play this and then get reaction from Seth. So I want to do that. I want you guys to hear um, Seth's reaction. This is where I've been wanting to go this whole time, to be honest right with now. you. I, I, it's just hard to try to find Thank you, things. Rashida. So Rashida's healing hands. You need to hear this, and you need to hear Appreciate all of Seth's support. response from this video. Appreciate everyone watching. So let's... <laughs> guys, am I... Is. I don't know what it is. I think it's kind of cute that that Vinny Politan is now becoming a YouTuber. <laughs> Am I the only one that's getting a chuckle out of that? Like it's it's so I, I love his perspective. I love his channel. I watch it. 
but I have to be honest with you. It's it's cute seeing him put up his super chats and super stickers. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just kicked my, my other screen off. Give me just a second. Holy crap. I think I moved the, the, the plug ever so slightly. Give me just a second. This is probably, I hope I don't screw up my freaking channel. <laughs> Hold on, I got, I got, I hit the, I hit the thing so much that it turned my, yep. there it goes. Okay, there we go. It turned my screen off, my, my second screen, so I had to unplug it and plug it back in. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm just saying, I got, I got a kick out of it. Like, we got Vinny Paladin. He's like a YouTuber now. I told you he was going to, he would be fine. Didn't I tell you? I'm telling you, I got a knack for this stuff, right? I can tell you that these mom and pops are going away, but there's certain people that are going to, they're going to be around for a really long time. They have no problems. And I've always said, I always said Vinny Politan. And it was like shortly after that, I started seeing that he has his own Vinny Politan YouTube page. And I'm like, oh, he's all growing up. And we're watching him grow into a YouTuber. It's so cute. But I have to say, he's doing really, really well with the um, the super chats and super stickers, at least displaying them, right? I, I, he's, he's struggling a little bit because he hasn't realized that the little doohickeys that they put in chat, like the little, you know, like the little wolf saying, I'm your favorite fan, right? You can't see that on, on this end of it, unfortunately, but the people in the chat can see it. So all you can do when you have those is pop them up and it just kind of looks like what you see here. <laughs> Welcome to the family, Vinny. Welcome to the family. We're going to watch this is, again. I'm showing this to Seth to get his take, his reaction to anything he sees or hears in this interview. Because, I mean, he knows these people. We don't know these people. He does. So let's take That's a, a good listen. point. I mean, Vinny does. We went and picked up our niece. Guys, give me just a second. That was uh, like, <laughs> that was like way loud. That was like loud on steroids in my ear. I don't know if it was that loud for you guys, but it was that loud for me. Just, uh, yeah, I got a call and um, asked if I could go and pick her up, and I did. And so um, we went and did that. We went to BJ's. Um, had a good time there. He ate up colossal popcorn um pam home to put groceries away because we got snacks because you know he's 15 and snacks um we went to the bowling alley and then from there we went to dinner came home um, he took out the trash because that's his chore. He takes the can to the end of the driveway. Now, before we listen to this, um, I just want to say that, you know, um, when it comes to, um, uh, oh, geez, I just lost my, my train of thought. Hold on. Let me go back just, just, just ever so slightly. Give me just five seconds. Let me listen to this because it was what, what she just said at the end. He took out the trash. Oh, that's it. So I remember, and you guys are going to have to correct me on this, okay? Because I, I I might be going off as something. We've been, we've been dealing with a lot. I mean, we've had quite the the, the news cycle, you know, from um, this little boy. Well, right, not wrong way. That little boy right there, Elijah Vu from Two Rivers, Wisconsin. We've got Madeline Soto, Summer Wells, Layla Santanel. We have all these kids, right? We have a lot of stuff that's going on. So occasionally, some of these cases run together. But I could have I could have sworn at the beginning before this case blew up when we were investigating it before we went to Riley Strain like then Riley Strain blew up. But I could have sworn that we heard from a neighbor that said they did see they actually saw uh, Sebastian take the garbage out that night. It was really really early on in this case. It was so early on that I I, I vaguely like vaguely 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 remember it. Does anybody remember that? Or it, do you think I might have it mixed up with another case? Because I, there was something about this morning. I forgot all about it because I was on the whole thing. You know, did he ever, did he really come home? And then it was something about the way Vinny said it today. It was like, it popped back in my head. And I'm like, wait a minute. Didn't a neighbor say early on in this? I thought they had had it on a video. Yeah, Carla. Yeah, that's it. Maybe that's what I remember. But I remember something. 
I remember something. Something was um, about the the trash. I remember that early on, but I think I lost that because everything kind of went straight to the Proudfoots. And then after that, you know, we're digging up everything under the sun and we're focusing on the the, the dumpster and the neighborhood next to it, you know? So it's, but I, 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 but I just remembered, and it was just this morning that I remembered it and it was watching Vinnie Politan. That's his chore. He takes the can to the end of the driveway. About nine o'clock, told him to go to bed. He just didn't come out of his room where he was playing. He said, all right, good night, mama. Good night, puppies. Love you. And went to bed. Um, he was doing something in his room because about an hour later I heard some noise and I was like, I don't care what you're doing in there, but go to sleep. And um, about midnight, I got up and I went to bed. All right, guys, give me just a second. Let me put this back up. This is Betty. Okay, so is nobody. Let's get back to it. Uh, which one? There it is. And um, six o'clock, I went to wake him up for school Monday morning, and that's when he went in here. Seth, you know Katie better than all of us. Okay. This is where I want you guys to pay attention to because I keep, when I listened to this, I thought, you know what? Because we've said it here too. We we went through um, that interview. We've discussed the Chronicles of Olivia interview. We compared it with the, the first and second interview and the changes that they had in those interviews. And we're here, but we've never heard what Seth has said for it or what he got out of those statements. He's going to explain it to you, and he is very, very keen on details. Watch. Us, obviously, you you know your son so well. Um, does that story? Is there anything in that story that doesn't make sense to you? The inconsistencies, from what I've heard before inconsistencies from what i've heard before those are the same inconsistencies that we've all heard we've all heard it, none of it makes sense Thing, things aren't none none of it makes sense so the people out there that call us conspiracy theories theorists and you know that we are looking into this and we are just wanting something bad to have this is not us this is us using our brain cells to put together some stuff here and this stuff doesn't make sense. You know, I'm not here to sling mud, but why is she asking Chris to verify what she did on Sunday? When Interesting he picked that up. Interesting of all things that he first picks up in this is that remember we stopped when we, we we put this video up and we were watching it for the first time do you guys remember me stopping it and saying did you guys just hear that did you just see that he looked over at her at him and and acted like what did i do or is this what i did and he's and he's acknowledging yep that's right and i literally stopped this the the program here to go back to that to review that I think like two or three separate times. And she sure did. She looks over in a validation and to make sure that she's saying it right. Not that, that it was wrong. It, it implied that he was there. The way it was done, it implied that Chris Proudfoot was there that day, which is what I had been assuming since the beginning of this case, literally since we started covering this case. Hey, Elisa, it's nice to see you, love. Thank you. God bless you. And I had said that, that you know, I know it's the one thing I know. I mean, my father was in construction since the doctor, you know, spack, smacked my butt on, you know, when I was born. Like, I've been on my dad's truck since I was two years old. I've been on, I grew up on construction sites. I know the majority of construction workers are alcoholics or drug addicts. I know that because that's my experience. 
Does that mean it's everywhere? No, but it is here in Florida. <laughs> most of the time your roofers, <laughs> I hate to tell you this, but most of the time your roofers got a 12 pack in them before they even get up on your roof. My family, I have a family of roofers. So I've always known that on Friday, typically you get your check around 2 or 2.30. You're off a little early. By, by the time you clean up, it's around 4 or 4.30. You get off a little early. And typically you don't work the weekends in the construction industry. You're off Saturday and Sunday. I've known people that have traveled for construction jobs, and when they're off on the weekend, they typically go home to be with their family for the weekend. And I thought it was really odd that he would stay in his trailer when he had a, a full weekend to be with his family. That was the first time that I thought maybe he didn't really care for Sebastian. If he's staying gone and only and, and Katie's the only one going over there, so that means he's probably coming home every, like, he just does not like Sebastian. He doesn't like Sebastian in the house. He doesn't want to be around Sebastian. That's what it sounds like to me. The only time him and Katie hang out on the weekends is when Sebastian's over at his father's house. <laughs> Donna knows. <laughs> so I just don't. I don't get this. I really, I, I just don't, I can't, I, I don't, it, it makes no sense. But let's keep listening to what else he caught up on. He picked up on that. He picked up on that. We picked up on that as well. So let's see what else he picked up on. When Chris wasn't here on Sunday. That is such. Or the fact that. She said that she heard a thump on another interview and didn't bother to check on our son. This kind of had Vinnie Politan's chat going off um, when we were watching this because everybody under there, they're like, you know, if she said, it, like, it, it went from him going, let me just tell you how we got to the thump first. <laughs> it's a little story, okay, how we got to the thump. First, first interview, second interview, he went to bed, no problem, 9 o'clock, you know, she she went to bed at midnight, he, she woke up at uh, 6 a.m., he was gone, okay? Those were the first two interviews. And then by the first two interviews, I thought they were done. The whole entire world was breathing down their neck, accusing them of this, that, and the other. And I didn't even know that Chronicles of Olivia was going over there to interview them because she was with uh, another crew out there at Riley Strain's. So there was a, a friend of hers that got her into the crowd, uh, Proudfoot's home. And so she did the interview. She didn't have a whole lot of information about this case at the time. Uh, she just she just knew that there was a missing boy and she just wanted to help the family. You know Olivia. You know how she is. She's the sweetest person in the freaking world. And so during this interview, she this is the first time that Katie now brings up that there was some type of noise, right? So this was just a noise. She she heard him doing something in the room and she hollers out, I don't know what you're doing, but knock it off and go to bed, right? And then it migrated from just the noise to now being at a full-fledged thud, okay? And so many people in Vinnie Politan's chat was like, wait a minute, you know, thud, a thud's different. A thud's something falling, a thud's something louder, a thud's something heavier, a thud, a thud is something that you would most likely get up to find out what happened. You know, you hear this 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 loud noise, you go check. You go check. So I thought that that was pretty interesting, but I wanted to explain that. How did we get a thud for those that didn't under, didn't hear the, the whole story of the thud? I don't know what creator, what, what channel uh, Chris and Katie were on when Katie said the thud comment, but I know that she introduced a noise in the Chronicles of Olivia interview that, that she never had discussed in previous interviews. You know, there's a difference between some, some noise or a thump. I mean, just... I want you to look at that man's face. That is a broken man. I want you to look at his face. 
Why aren't we getting this from Chris and Katie? Why aren't we seeing this from Chris and Katie? Why is Chris and Katie, he, this man is running to the problem while Chris and Katie, our military trained people, are running away from it. It's a little frustrating. Heartbreaking, yeah. It's hard to see his face like this. I got to tell you, I don't know how many other women are like me, but there's just something about us or about me like I get, it's not, I think it's the way we were taught, right? That men are strong, right? At least from my generation. I know the, the newer generations, but from my generations, men were men and women were women. And we were expected, I didn't quite make the thing, you know, we were expected to be really sweet and nurturing. <laughs> I missed the class. And men were to be strong and protective. And to protect, you know, their families. And it's just, you see, why is this not coming from, from them? You know, you would think that Chris, this being, him being military, him having the ego, you know, the military ego, why is he not stepping up to the plate and, and having a pissing contest about, you know, we need to do this. We need to do this. We need to do this. Why isn't he going out and saying, hey, Seth, you know, this is probably a better use of our time. This is where we really need to search. You know, I looked at the maps. I think he might have, um, you know, in this direction. You're not getting any of that from them. You're getting them running away while Seth is running too. He's doing this all by himself with the help of beautiful people out there in the world that never met this man before in his life. There was a family of four that's now a family of one trying to find where the other one is. His whole entire family has been utterly torn apart. He does sure does he sure does seem that way. He sure does seem that way. They seem to have uh, no one backing them. Um, are you them being the proud foots? I don't think any because let, let's face it, we're we're all we're all here, okay? We do this every day. Even like there, the people in his community are there with him. Do you guys realize that you know that instinctual? Um, like, have you ever been somewhere and you felt you're you're doing just um, a normal task? Maybe you're going grocery shopping and you just get that really weird uneasy feeling like somebody is watching you or following you it's called instincts and i feel like people on the ground have a better instinct of what's going on than say us you know doing this online and one of the reasons why i'm, I'm so adamant about being boots on the ground is because you just get so much more even the you know the feeling the vibe the vibe tells you a lot um, talking to somebody on the phone and them lying to you and then having to look you in the face and lie to you, 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 you get it. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot harder and, and you get that vibe. You can feel it. You know, when you're face to face with them and they lie to you, you know, they're lying to you. So I just kind of feel like that, you know, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it better than that. I don't know how to explain it better than that. But Seth is out here by himself, doing all this by himself. He's he's asking for help. We've got people in the community that, from what I heard this morning, are going to be protesting or having some sign waving, demanding that Chris repent. This is their community. This is their community coming up and 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 being advocates and activists for this boy. I just want to make sure I put that disclaimer in there before I go roll into town and everybody blame me for it. <laughs> It was organized before me, okay? I, I had no idea. I just learned about it to this morning, okay? So you guys can't blame me. Just like Duty Ron can't blame me. Duty Ron, you need to do better fact-checking. Quit listening to the hate channels. They're trolling you. They're giving you false, misrepresented information. Duty Ron. Somebody clip that and send it to him. 
All right, guys. Well, um, that's really all I have. I don't really have a whole lot. I feel like if he was in a pond, he would be surfaced by now. I feel like if he was anywhere uh, out there. Now, we do have the RSO angle to look at. But can I actually, you know what? Let me pull my chat. Let me pull my chat. Um, with the behaviors of mom and dad, for my audience, and I want you guys to be honest with me. For one, that you believe it could be an RSO. Two, you believe Chris is guilty. Or I should say mom and dad, or mom and stepdad are guilty. Katie and Chris are guilty because I, I think they're both, they both have a hand in this somehow. I don't know why. It's just what I feel. But so we'll say, if you truly believe that it could possibly be that, that he's with an RSO, put a one in the chat. If you think Chris and Katie stink to high heaven, put a two in the chat. I just want to pull. Be honest. I want to pull. So we got to... One, two, okay, get twos, twos. Yeah, because I was bouncing around that theory, and while it, it, it does, thank you guys for being honest. Thank you, Vicki. I appreciate that. <clears throat> thank you, guys. Perfect, perfect. So I've been bouncing around um, with the whole possibility of it being an RSO, you know? It, it, could it be probable? You know, we... we just a few months ago, we were covering Charlotte Senna. Yeah, it's possible. We we watched that happen. We were we thought she was a goner. Let's be honest. I know I did. I thought she was gone. She is literally a miracle to be walking around. A miracle, in my opinion. And so we know that these types of things can happen. But here's the problem I have. We have no movement on any cameras. We have no forced entry into the home. Heck, we don't even have proof that Sebastian walked out the home because all the dog searches, not one hit. Guys, I don't think people understand what that means. They didn't get a hit even outside of that home. They didn't get a hit on the driveway, the, the sidewalk, anything. He had no shoes on and they could not get a, a, a scent hit. So even if it was, it could potentially be a stranger danger or something like that, I can't explain how it could happen. The only thing that really makes sense is something happened inside that home and wherever Sebastian left to appears to have left in a car from the garage, in my opinion. Because even if the car was outside that home, they would have the scent on the outside of that home, which we know for a fact they do not. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I think you told me about that, uh, Green Eyed. I'm sorry, I haven't even checked my emails. Let me go over here now and check them. Give me just a second, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta smack me around, okay. Let's see here. Um, I do not see your I do not see your email, so you're going to have to resend it. Green Eye, call into the show. Yeah, I don't I don't see it. Did you send it to bullhornbetty at gmail.com? If you want to call in, you can call in, but I don't see it here at all. Um, hmm. So green eyed, call call into the show and let me know what you what you need because I don't see your I don't see your email. I think that three hour call Sunday night was a plan. I do too. But you know what I I, I, I do, but I don't think I don't honestly I don't think that um, whatever happened to Sebastian was premeditated. I still think that whatever happened, because this would be something more in line with rage, in my opinion, somebody that just lost their ever-loving stuff and was like, oh shit. <laughs> that's that's the way I that's the way I have been reading this from almost the beginning. I don't I don't I mean it's gonna take a little more to get that premeditation for me, but I think what it could have happened is it was the oh shit factor. He could have went back or whatever. And been on the phone so he could come back and, and help. I, I don't know. Because, see, this is the problem. Law enforcement's not giving us any pings. They're keeping this really close to the vest. 
and um, they're absolutely stating they have no, and I mean no, evidence whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? So if, and I don't believe that. So that when they, when I hear that, it seems like they've got somebody in their eyes that they don't want this information getting out to. And right now it's easier just to say, I don't have it. We don't know anything. This is just a missing person because the players in this case are ultra, ultra close. You know what I'm saying? They're ultra, ultra close. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, I think that's about it and I think that I think that's about it so um, if you guys have any questions you guys can send them to me at bullhornbetty at gmail.com as you guys know I really been trying to uh, do something a little different with this channel so you guys aren't just getting me first thing in the morning you guys are getting some content because I'm doing stuff throughout the day and I'm and, and before I was waiting and trying to do it all in one main live in the morning and trying to cram a whole bunch of stuff into two hours and I think this is um, breaking it down a little bit more in bite-sized pieces. Okay. Oh, all right, there you are. Okay, I do see it. Thank you, by the way. Thank you. I don't know why I didn't get it before. Um, let me download. I don't want to um, dox your email, so give me just a second. Let me go ahead and download that and see if I can present this here. Um... Let me do that. Okay, let me try something else. There we go. All right, let me just go over this. We'll go over this real quick. Thank you. And this is courtesy of Green Eye PI. Um, mum, 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 mum. Let's see what we got here. Share screen. We've got a window. This is the window I want to. <coughs> I don't know if I can make this bigger or not. Let's see. Oh, nice. Ha ha ha. So here's an email. It says, um, uh, uh, Katie took one. You, uh, so you should too. So what if, so what if that asked hard questions? Just tell the truth. You got this. Shut these people up. Thanks for your concern. Yes, I have one scheduled. So Christopher Proudfoot, this might be breaking news. We're hearing that Christopher Proudfoot is now, oh, thank you, Miss Robin. God bless you. Uh, Miss Robin just gifted five Bullhorn Betty membership. Wow, 15 Bullhorn Betty memberships during this live. If you received a Bullhorn Betty membership, please, please, please tell Miss uh, Robin, thank you so very much. And uh, from me to you, Miss Robin, thank you for the love and support. So this person is like, awesome. I'm so excited to get uh, this pressure off of you and prove people wrong. Um, it says, thanks for answering, uh, praying for you guys. Uh, thanks for the prayers. So it looks like, uh, according to this, Chris is saying, let me push this up to you just a little higher for you right there. Chris is saying he's got a polygraph scheduled. Got a polygraph scheduled. <laughs> Took a while. How many teeth needed to be pulled for that one? <laughs> I'm just speaking the obvious. I'm just speaking the obvious. So let's hope. Let's pray to God. Let's hope and pray to God that this animal gets his freaking polygraph. Because you know what? I shouldn't call him an animal. Let me step back. Let me not call him an animal yet. No, I'm going to call him an animal because he's he beat up. He likes to beat up women and kids. So you know. I think if he didn't do this, I, I do think that uh, a passing a polygraph test um, would be a, a great step in the right direction for social media as well as mainstream media. I definitely do. So I'm not going to criticize this. Um, I, I, you know, we've heard so many lies from Chris Proudfoot and Katie Proudfoot, in my opinion, that I'm not putting a whole lot of stock in this, right? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm saying, okay, good. I, I would have liked to know. Maybe, maybe Green Eye. Maybe you can just kind of search around and find out uh, when it's scheduled. You know, um, that would be really good if we can at least kind of have an idea of a scheduled date and time to kind of be on the lookout for the response from him as to whether he passed or failed. Um, 
But I do believe that if he does take the polygraph test and he passes, I believe that it'll settle a lot of the, and I, I would like, because if it's not them, let's move on. Now, either way, I still have no respect for Katie Proudfoot or Chris Proudfoot. You guys are military and you left a man behind. So even if you are innocent of all this, you're still guilty in my mind for being pretty shitty people. Seth has one scheduled next Wednesday. You know what? I really do. If 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 Chris decided to go ahead and do this polygraph test, I believe that that the, the pressure of Seth doing one is what pushed him over the edge because to, to have everybody in the family have a polygraph test, but you and everybody's looking squarely at you because you're the one with the marks on it. You're the one being the cocky jerk. You're the one that's telling us, ah, my, my, my timeline so state secret. I can't tell you. It might go to the integrity of the investigation, but the mom that was with him wouldn't go to the integrity of the investigation. Hmm. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. He just says he has one scheduled and you know what? How do we know that he's not talking about the one that was scheduled for Nancy Grace before he decided to cancel it? The hoops she jumped through to get him that polygraph test for him to turn her down and say TBI did it. I've never in my life heard TBI. As a matter of fact, most governmental agents says, we can't advise you of this. You'll need to seek your own law, your, your own uh, legal advice, right? <laughs> for TBI to be giving him legal advice. Uh, oh, you don't really want to take this. You might want to just keep your mouth shut. When have you ever had an investigator tell you that? Cut it out. That is not what the, the, the investigators want your mouth open. They want you, they want that mouth running. Because the more you run, the more information they get. Kind of funny. Few people clam up, huh? It's awfully funny that few people just clam up. We don't even hear a peep from them. Peep. Katie. Chris. A lot of us are getting together, you know, to go out and look for your son. I would still like to extend the olive branch to you and let you know that we will be out there. I really want to help find your son. I really, and I'm meaning this from the bottom of my heart. You guys know when I'm being, when I'm being facetious or being, uh, you know, sarcastic, but from the bottom of my heart, I would really like to go out there. I, I, I will not record. I will not uh, take notes. I will not do anything. But I do want to see you guys out there in those woods searching for your son. I would like to extend my hand. I'm, I'm a pretty good searcher. I could probably use something from some Navy trained people. You know, I like to learn too. I like to learn about this stuff. I like to, you know, hone my skills a little better. Right? So I, I hope that, you know, Katie and Chris, that maybe you, we're, we're all coming out there on Saturday. And I really hope that you guys just be able to put your personal petty um personality differences aside and check the bs at the door and let's go out there and search for your son and i really hope that you guys do participate in searching for your son the boy that you say you love the boy that you taught to walk talk katie the one you got to see explore and learn and you know the first little knee scrape teaching him how to swim Katie sounds like you were a good mom at one point yeah let me see what we got do we have a link Do we have a link? I see it, Mama Lama. I just don't know if we have a link. No videos? I don't even know where the live stream is. I wish they just put these live streams up here. Let me just check my phone. Do we have a live stream for it? Because if we don't have a live stream for it, I can't play it. Let's see what we got. Hold on just a second, guys. No, I don't. I don't think I have a live stream for his court. If somebody can drop a live, I'll I'll run it. But otherwise, we'll talk about it later. And not only that, but I'm not really on Elijah Vu at the moment. Uh, we're still on. Um, well, we're about to uh, close the show, anyways. But Justin just went live. Okay, so that's perfect. So let's let's everybody let's go over to Justin's page and and watch him.
And um, let's go over there because to be honest with you, I'm done. I've got a lot of research that I'm doing on this particular case and I've got a lot of videos that I've been pumping out throughout the day. So I need to get working on that. I've got another video that will be dropping. It's kind of a summary of what we just discussed anyways, but it will be dropping in about an hour and a half. I've already got it in the queue, uh, but for it to get, you know, and stuff like that. And I've been doing some premieres. So you guys, I know one of the things were that I heard from the me just dropping the videos, the you know, 20, 30 minute videos that you guys really enjoyed having chat. Um, so I'm premiering some of those longer videos, the ones that are over 20 minutes. So you guys can be in the chat and be around your friends and be around me and where we can have a, a conversation. And I'm more in tuned, to be honest with you, when I have those videos that are on um, premiere, I'm more in tune to you guys and what you guys are saying and the questions you guys have. And, you know, when I'm doing this type of live where I'm always focused on this and looking at the videos and trying to get the marks right, I, I lose a lot of the chat. I don't see anything you guys are writing in chat. And that's why I, I only pick up this and that and there because I don't see it. And, and so when I do, when I do the premieres, I can actually conversate with you. It's a, it's a little bit easy. I, I actually like it. I, I have to be honest with you. I, I've done two videos like that and I absolutely love the format. I absolutely love the concept and I absolutely loved, loved, loved chatting with you guys while it was playing and, and really being able to discuss that in chat. So that was really neat. It was interesting. And it was fun for me. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, we'll keep doing some stuff like that um, as we roll out more stuff. You know, I'm just trying to play with this. We've done things the same way for so long. And it's like, you know, the clouds are lifting, the birds are chirping, you know, life's starting to get back to normal after almost a year. And it's like, I really want to take this momentum and just do something that's more impactful that you guys will enjoy. So uh, I always uh, appreciate the feedback. So be sure to write me. You can always email me at bullhornbetty at gmail.com. Put a comment below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if you really want to help this channel grow, please consider becoming a monthly member as you, as many of you, 15 beautiful people just received your Bullhorn Betty membership. Thank you so much. God bless each and every one of you. And until next time. Please be safe, but more importantly, kind to one another. God bless. As you wake up in the morning, you want to find the latest, greatest information about criminal cases and have an intuitive conversation about the suspects associated with these cases. Head over to the Bullhorn Betty channel on YouTube. Get breaking news right here on the Bullhorn Betty channel. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty Coffee Club. Enjoy your stay and enjoy your day.